So my first question to you as an audience is, do you believe money can buy love? Who here thinks money can buy love? There's always one or two, but... <laughs> in general, I'll go with the idea that most people don't think we can buy love. And the reason why we don't think that it's possible to buy love is because you can't extract love from the person. You can't transfer it out of the person. It's very connected to the person. It's very connected to our idea of personhood. And the experience of giving and receiving love is connected to our personhood. Now I'm going to ask you another question. Do you think you can buy sex? I would say there's more in the audience, but actually, again, the answer is no. Because this would also assume that it's possible to extract sex from a person, that somehow you can extract it from a body and make it a transferable object. But I know what I'm telling you now is very different to what we all know and what we're told every day. We're told every day it is possible to buy sex. But the people who say it's possible to buy sex are really trading on a dangerous illusion. They're trading on an idea that sex is a commodity. Because if sex is possible to be traded, but sex is related to the body and a body is related to the person, the only way to trade sex is to turn it into a thing, to make sex and the person into a tool. And who do we have to thank for thinking about persons as tools? We have Aristotle, the great Western philosopher, Aristotle. This is what Aristotle said about slaves. Tools may be animate as well as inanimate. A slave is a living piece of property. Now, I want to be very clear to you. Slaves weren't living pieces of property. They weren't animate tools. They were always persons and human beings. What Aristotle did in his politics was create a rationalization for the exploitation of human beings. He actually created an illusion. He says it's possible to carry on exploiting human beings as slaves because we can see them as not quite human. In fact, they're tools, they're property. And it's actually this idea that has persist persisted into our contemporary culture because this idea actually lost ground over time that people were property and tools. But it was resurrected in the, again in the ideas of the great Enlightenment philosopher, René Descartes. But this time, he said something else. He said the mind and the body are separate. The mind belongs to a person, but the body is a thing. So what René Descartes did was he created a new regime, a new way to justify the exploitation of human bodies. And we inherited that idea to this day. It is still present in today's culture. <clears throat> and so, we also create new rational regimes to justify the exploitation of human beings. And we have new ones created all the time. Some of them in the realm of prostitution is the idea that it's free choice or it's a personal, personal liberation. These are all new ways to rationalize the exploitation of human beings. Because when you buy, when you think you're buying sex, you're not actually buying sex, you're buying the exploitation of another human being. Now, don't get me wrong, it's possible as a human being to have love without sex and sex without love, but it's not possible to have love and sex without personhood. Love and sex are reserved for living persons and living creatures. But these ideas persist today, this idea that property, that people can be property, that their bodies can be separated out from their personhood, that sex can somehow be extracted like coal from a rock. <clears throat> so, what does this all have to do with sex robots? Well, sex robots continue to build upon this idea developed by Descartes that it's possible to have sex outside of a person. 
it's possible to have sex outside of a person. Because sex isn't connected to a body, because a body is a thing and it doesn't belong to a person. And these ideas are perpetuated through the development of these new types of robots. Do we want to have this again? Do we want to keep perpetuating these ideas that justify the exploitation of people? Just like Aristotle did, just like Descartes did, and just like we do over and over again. So I need to tell you something very important about sex robots. It's not possible for them to be sex robots. As I said, sex is part of the body, and the body is part of the person. You can't extract sex from the person. And therefore, because the body is part of the person and the living creatures experience the real experience of being human, you cannot actually have a sex robot. The more accurate term for these kinds of entities would be live, um, mechanical dolls or even porn bots. Now, once again, as I said, you can have love without sex, you can have sex without love, but you cannot have love and sex outside of personhood. And these ideas, you see, you think, oh, it's just some niche market or it's prostitution, it's happening somewhere else, it's not happening to me in my life but it's happening to our children, our sisters, our brothers, our friends, and our family. Because actually, this idea that our body is a thing has mean that it's become a site of attack. We are now living in cultures where people want to modify their bodies, change it, alter it, through plastic surgery, they want to self-harm it, because the body is not considered as connected to the person. And these ideas are perpetuated over and over again. And I'm sorry to say that we have young children now, little girls growing up, and they hate their bodies. But we don't just have little girls growing up like that. We have young boys now. Because in the past, these things were very, very gendered. That's absolutely clear. But the thing is, if you can turn the body into a commodity, and if you can provide a rationalization for why you're doing it, then it doesn't really matter because now you've created a rationalization that you can make use of, you can use to legitimize and justify the exploitation of human beings. And people are making money from these ideas. I guarantee it, there is someone making money from exploitation all the time. So that's why I created the campaign against sex robots. Because I thought, this is enough. We can only have this idea that you can have a sex robot if you have the idea, to begin with, that sex can exist outside of a body, and a body can exist outside of a person. And how many more rationalizations do we need in our culture to keep justifying exploitation of human beings? And, you know, the thing about rationalization is it's an illusion. It's not actually true. You can't buy a human body. You can exploit a human body, but you cannot buy it. Because humans are not the same as things. They're not property and they can't be transacted. Only things and tools can be commercially exchanged. And that's why human beings have to be turned into property and things. And that's how dehumanization occurs. And that's how Aristotle was allowed to justify slavery. So, money, can buy neither love nor sex. This is only something that can be given and received freely between persons. Thank you very much.